All right, so let's look at a multiple regression kind of problem solving example in Excel. I'm gonna go really fast through this and keep in mind that every decision I make, I already know <laughs> you're gonna have to problem solve a little bit more, but here we go. So data, data analysis. I am trying to predict housing profits based on things about the house. So my input range is going to be profit and my predictors I am going to, instead of highlighting one predictor for simple regression, I'm going to highlight them all. So there's one rationale for putting your profit to the side or your dependent variable to the side. I'm going to include labels, confidence level, all of my plots except for the line fit plot. You're welcome to, but it's the same information. I'm going to say OK, and I get lots of stuff. Step one, assumptions. So let's look at all these. And yes, there's a lot. So this one right here should be a nice line, 45 degree angle. It's a little bit flatter than I'd like, but it's still no pattern, no weird things. It's a nice line. I'm gonna start looking at each individual predictor's residual plot. So this is year built. You can see already that I have an outlier. If you hover over it, it tells me that my outlier is 1998. So it is completely different than everything else. Let's go back to my data. Looking through, I'm at 2000s, 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 2000s. This one is so different than everybody else that I am just going to get rid of it. I'm going to delete the entire thing. Good, thank you. And this whole regression, because I just changed something, doesn't work. You, of course, probably shouldn't delete it. You should name it regression one or trial one. But we're going to redo it and see how that fixes. So this is now to 25. This is now to 25. Actually, I don't know that. Let me just read it. Um, I highly recommend including labels, which you are used to seeing. Everything else should be the same. OK, try again. So going over here, again, my line I'm happy with. Oh, look, you're built. That looks like a much better graph. So everything is spread nicely throughout the line. That one meets assumptions. Ceiling height, again, everything is spread nicely throughout. I don't have any patterns, I don't have any funnels, check. This one gets a little weird because I have a zero and one. It's either it has one or it doesn't have one. But looking across, everything looks good. If these were grouped really close to the line and this one was spread really far, that would be a funnel. So meet the assumptions. Again, met the assumptions, looks good. Looks good, looks good. Again, we have another one that looks okay. So farmers is okay. Ooh, inner city, this is a problem. So you can see how everything is spread really far and this is spread really thin. So this is a funnel and that is a violation of homoscedasticity. We don't like that. So what I would do is I would go back here I would insert a column and I'm going to say inner city and I'm just going to square all of it. So equals that one squared. Oh, hey, guess what? It's zero. And then I'm going to do that all the way down. Oh, hmm, that's not really going to be helpful because it doesn't change anything. So maybe we should instead square root inner city. So here I'm going to say equals square roots, there we go, of that. I am going to copy this one all the way down. Hmm, that's not really changing it either. So in this case, because it's a die cut, doing anything to it isn't really going to change the variable itself. It's not going to fix the problem because it's a die cut, a zero, one coded thing. So I'm going to get rid of it completely. I'm going to now, so now this whole regression, trial two, you could name that trial two, but I'm going to delete it because it doesn't mean anything. So data analysis, let's do this again. My, whoa, let's redo it all. So profit is my Y. All of these are my X values. We're going to say OK again and double check. Guess what? 
none of these have changed. So if I check this predictor one time, I'm good. The only thing I was concerned about was inner city, which I deleted. So I'm done with assumptions with graphs. I want to double check that my residuals follow a normal distribution. Sorry about my dog. So I am going to run descriptives very quickly. Summary statistics, I included labels. I have a skewness level right here that is between plus and minus one. So I have now met all of my assumptions. I can now look at tables, woohoo! My R squared value is 0.78. So I have a positive, fairly strong relationship that is explaining 62% of the variance in Y based on a combination of all of my X's. Fantastic. I'm now going to look at my model as a whole, and it is significant. So my model as a whole is significant because this guy right here is less than 0.05. So the model is significant. But I don't know if each individual part, each predictor is significant. So here I'm going to look at all of my p-values. So I have that one's significant, and that one's significant. Everything else is not significant. It is not lower than 0 0.05. So bedrooms is significant, and ceiling height is significant, but none of the rest of these are significant predictors. Here's what I do now. I have met all the assumptions. I don't have to do that again. But now I have to problem solve and get all of these down to where I have only significant predictors and I'm trying to keep the highest R squared value possible. So I want to delete one of these at a time. So I'm going to find the highest value. In this case, that is baths. And I'm going to delete my baths right here. And I'm going to rerun regression. And I'm going to rerun it and rerun it and rerun it until I have only positive, I'm sorry, only significant predictors. I don't, so I want you to pause the video right now and I want you to go through and run as many as you can and make sure it is. They are all significant. I already know, because I know this data set, that those do not suddenly become significant. It is very possible that as you are running your model, that you delete one predictor and another one becomes significant. Or you delete one predictor and a different predictor becomes not significant. So that has to do with that multicollinearity thing. Also, regression, I'm sorry, Excel has to have them side by side. So I'm going to rerun this one more time, which will be our final model because I know this data set. You, of course, would be running this, deleting one at a time. Do not do what I am doing right now. I already know that this is the final model. You are going to delete one at a time and problem solve. So again, these are, have already been checked. I know they're good. So I have my multiple R has changed. My R squared is now 51%. So I'm explaining 51% of profit based on ceiling heights and number of bedrooms. My model is much more significant at this point. And when I go down, it tells me that each predictor, ceiling height, and bedroom are significant, but my intercept is not. Meaning, if I have zero ceiling height and I have zero bedrooms, guess what? I have zero profit. Not shocking. So I do not need to include this value in my regression line. In this case, it is profit equals... 6595.01 times ceiling, T -E -I -L, ceiling plus 6665.55 times the number of bedrooms. This is my regression line. This is my final product. And what that means is if I hold ceiling height constant, for one bedroom, I'm going to increase my profit by this value. 
If I do two bedrooms, then I'm going to double that, and that is what my profit is going to increase. Vice versa, holding bedrooms constant. If I increase my ceiling height by one foot, I am going to increase my profit by $6,500. This is awesome. If I am flipping houses, then that tells me that if I want to influence my profit, I should look for houses that have a lot of bedrooms and have high ceilings. That is exactly how I'm going to use this. And then I can predict what my profit is going to be. It's not going to be exactly that, but I'm 95% confident that it will be close to that.